This video is our first of two videos where we're going to learn about line integrals, a new type of integral, over a scalar field. Remember, scalar field really means a scalar function. So we're going to start with a surface. And we're not interested in the entire surface. We're only interested in the part of the surface above a curve C, which is in the xy plane. And so what we're trying to do is we're going to try to find an integral whose value represents the area of this curtain or fence whose base is on the curve C and the height at each point is the corresponding height on the surface. So this blue line here is actually the image of this curve, yellow curve C, but on the surface. Well, how are we going to go about that? Well, we have to have a smooth curve, meaning that if we look at our uh, vector representation, uh, that the uh, vector function is continuous for that curve, and the tangent vector is never the zero vector in our interval. So just like we did in calculus one, where we had an interval on the x-axis from a to b, here we have an interval for our parameter t that goes from a to b. We're going to break that up into n equal subintervals. And then in each in subinterval, we'll choose a sample value. We're going to call on our curve here. P sub 1 will be the image of T sub 1. P sub 0 is the image of T sub 0, which is just going to be A, and so on. And now we have broken up our curve into N sub curves, or little arcs here. Uh, so from P0 to P1, P1 to P2, and so on. Now, if we look at the image of our sample value, that will give us a sample point on each one of these little subcurves. And just because the distance from T1 to T2 and from T0 to T1 is all the same, length delta t, that doesn't mean that each one of these little curves or arcs has the same length. They actually could have all different lengths, and so we'll have to put an index on there. Delta si is going to be the length of the curve from p sub i minus 1 to p sub i. So that should give us all of the notation to be able to proceed like we did in Calc 1 and write a Riemann sum. And then we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of that Riemann sum. So our line integral of the function f along the curve c with respect to arc length is defined to be, well, we first of all, let's look at the notation. We still use the same integral sign. Instead of having bounds, we have a subscript with the letter for the curve, c, and then our integral is going to be using the differential ds, telling us that we're going to take the integral with respect to arc length. And so what did we do? Well, we took the length of each one of these little subcurves, that's the delta si, we multiplied it by the function value of some sample point between the endpoints of the subcurve. That'll give us an estimate then. 
if we add up all n of those for that area that we're trying to calculate. And then as we take the limit as n goes to infinity, that will give us our best approximation. That's what we're going to call the line integral. Now, how are we going to evaluate this? Well, if we remember our arc length function, we just start at a fixed value a, and then we go to a variable as in our upper bound u. That told us that the differential ds is related to our parameter dt through this equation. That is just going to be radical of x prime squared plus y prime squared times dt. So to evaluate this integral, I could write everything in terms of t. So I'll replace, whenever I see x, I'll replace it with its corresponding parametric equation. Same thing for y, and then ds gets replaced by this expression for dt. And we can summarize that in vector form. Remember that this is actually uh, the length of r prime of t times dt. And so uh, we'll also use this notation where we say f of r of t, meaning that exactly what I said before, that we're going to replace x by its corresponding uh, parametric equation and y by its corresponding parametric equation. Now, we know that different curves can have, uh, or I'm sorry, the same curve can have many different parametric representations or parameterizations. Uh, but the value of the line integral with respect to arc length should be the same as long as you traverse the curve only once as t increases from a to b. So if I have an open curve, that means that I don't go to the end point, then turn around and start coming back again. Or if I had a closed curve, that means I would go around that closed curve only once. So again, we started off by saying, uh, what does this line integral represent? Well, if the surface is above the xy plane, it tells us the area of this fence or curtain, which would look like more like a fence if I remove the surface from the picture. So let's do an example here. We're going to try to evaluate the line integral of 2 plus xy squared along the curve c, where c is the right semicircle x equals 4 minus y squared. So that's a portion of x squared plus y squared equals 4. It is the right half of it, so the part that's in the first and the fourth quadrant. We'll use the standard parameterization for a circle. And x is going to be 2 cosine t, 2 because that's the radius of the semicircle, and y is 2 sine t. And I want t to increase, so it's going to start down here where uh, the angle is negative pi over 2 and increase up to pi over 2. So let's set up our integral. I need to know what the ds differential is in terms of t. Well, I'll replace uh, x prime with the derivative of 2 cosine t, which would be negative 2 sine t. Replace y prime with the derivative of 2 sine t. That'll be 2 cosine t. Square both of those, and then take the square root. Well, that'll give me, what, 4 sine squared t plus 4 cosine squared t. That'll just be the radical of 4, so 2 dt. So my integral, my line integral over the curve c, is going to be the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. 
Remember, these are my bounds on the parameter t. In the integrand, I'm going to replace x with 2 cosine of t, y with 2 sine of t. So when I square that, I would get 2 cosine of t times 4 sine squared of t, or as I've written, 8 cosine t sine squared t. And then ds we found to be 2 dt. So I'll pull that constant multiplier 2 out in front of the integral. And then let's evaluate it. The antiderivative of 2 is 2t. The antiderivative of sine squared t cosine t, I'll just use a u substitution. That would be 1 third sine cubed of t multiplied times 8. And we'll evaluate that from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And that works out to be 2 pi plus 32 over 3. So we don't really necessarily have to have C be entirely piecewise smooth. It could have uh, uh, points where it has sharp corners. But there, you can only have a finite number of points. So in other words, uh, C could be the union of a finite number of smooth curves. So for example, here, I may want to look at this curve as the union of four curves. I have a line segment, a quarter circle, another quarter circle, and then a semicircle. And I have at least two sharp corners here. But I can still evaluate the integral by looking at the curve as the union of those four smooth curves. And so the line integral over the entire curve would just be the sum of the line integral over each of the smooth pieces. Let's look at an example where we have such a case. So our, we're going to going to evaluate the line integral over the curve C of 5y, where C is the, has two parts. The first part is the portion of the parabola x equals 5 minus y squared from the point 0 radical 5 on the x-axis to the point 1 comma 2. And then it's followed by a line segment. It's the part of the line x equals 1 half y from 1 comma 2 to 0 comma 0. So let's take a look at the graph of that. So our first part is this portion of the parabola. And the second part is this line segment. So how are we going to parameterize these curves? For the parabola, y is the independent variable. x depends on y. So I'm going to set y to be on my parameter, t. And then by just using this formula, that would tell me that x would be 5 minus t squared. I just replace y with t. Now my bounds on t have to be the bounds on y. I can look at the graph to help me. And I can see that the y values vary from 0 all the way to 2. For the line segment, I'll take advantage of the equation that we have here. And I'll say that, oh yeah, I'm going to have uh, an independent variable of y. So y will be t again. And then x will be 1 half t. And again, looking at the y values on this curve, they go from 0 to 2. Let's figure out what our ds will equal on the, the derivatives of each of those parametric equations. And then take the square root of the sum of the squares. That's multiplied times dt. I'll do the same thing with the line segment. I just get constant values for my derivatives of the parametric equations. 
then take the square root of the sum of the squares, clean that up a little bit, and I'll wind up with one half radical five dt. So how do I evaluate the integral? I'm going to break it up into two parts, one part for each of these smooth curves. So my bounds of integration are going to be 0 to 2. And in the first one, remember my integrand is 5y. And in each parametri parametrization, uh, I said that y equals t. So the, I'm going to have 5t then times ds, which is different for each uh, integral. And so uh, here I have radical 4t squared plus 1. I have a 5t on the outside. So I should be able to evaluate this with the u substitution, where in the second integral, it's just going to be a power rule. So let's make our u substitution. Also change the bounds to be in terms of u. So when uh, t equals 0, u will equal 1. When t equals 2, u equals 17. And so I'll write the first integral now in terms of u. And I'll pull out all of these constants in front of the second integral. Take the antiderivative, and then we can evaluate those. And um, I can clean this up a little bit, maybe write it in one set of brackets. So we're going to look at uh, more line integrals in the next video. And in particular, we can see that we don't have to take a line integral with respect to arc length. We can take it with respect to x or with respect to y. And we can also take find line integrals of uh, vector field, I mean, sorry, of scalar functions of three variables where we would take the line integral over a space curve.